Hello and welcome to my first ever video on my brand new channel. This is Dread War Gaming. Yes, it's like Dread War Gaming, War Gaming. It's, I think, a clever play of words. My friends think it sucks. But I'm too lazy to change it probably and too stubborn, so it's probably going to stick around now. But you're, you guys, you're not even here for clever names or clever plays of words. You are here for content. And I promise you guys, there's plenty of green skin goodness coming your way. This channel is going to be full of uh, product reviews. We're going to do some uh, law. We're going to do some painting, some building, some kit bashing, some converting, all of that sort of goodness. And uh, we'll introduce a few other people into the into the fray later on as we go, because we're going to need people to stomp where as far as battle reports and things like that are concerned anyway. Um, plus, I do like the idea of some of the other channels out there, some of the other good green skin channels out there are sometimes do shows together where they might chat about green skin topics and stuff like that. I wouldn't mind getting involved in that myself. Um, but before we get on to all of that, the content of today's video, most importantly, is actually a product review, a brutally honest one or an honestly brutal one. Yeah. Nice little joke there if you like it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be looking at the Grog Skulls Boys, the Orc starter set for Kill Team. I have it right here. Ta-da! Very snazzy. What do you think? Hmm? Well, I'll tell you what I think just shortly. Okay guys, the box itself contains a five-man Orc Kill Team, or a five-Orc Kill Team. Well, suit yourself. Either way, there are five Orcs in the box. There's also the Sector Mechanicus Galvanic Servo Haulers, there are seven tactics cards, two mission cards, a bunch of orc cardboard tokens, and five preconceived character cards. Now by that, I mean the names, the abilities, and demeanor of each character have already been decided for you. There are no blank cards for you to make your own orc kill team included in this box. Firstly, I'd like to say, I am someone who bought this. Shadow War Armageddon or Kill Team 2.1 if you prefer. Yes, it was nice, it had all that new scenery in it. And yes, it was handy for me that of all the armies it could have contained, it had orcs in it. But the game was completely unsupported and disappeared within like a month. So those small scale skirmishes were forced to wait. And that rule book and those templates, well, they became pointless relics almost overnight. So when it was announced Kill Team would be back and would be fully supported, I had mixed feelings. My main hope was that it would be an easy introduction into the hobby for friends visiting, you know, something that you can have in your arsenal that you can just pull out of the shelf and just go, here, let's have a quick game of this. I had, of course, hoped the same for Shadow War. Let's not mention Shadow War. <laughs> Though it seems the Kill Team manual does just to rub the salt in, and it even appears in big letters on page six, the evil buggers. Anyway, Kill Team is not just a restricted, shrunken down version of 40K played with only a handful of troops. It actually introduces additional skills to your troops that further personalize them, making each Kill Team member individually valuable and distinct. These skills include comms, demolition, and combat expert, along with a few others. I think you all agree though, they all sound very exciting. I'm sure these specialties will add some really fresh flavour to the game as well and make the small skirmishes more meaningful. And besides that, of course, the possibilities for unique miniatures. I mean, with specialist troop abilities, you would expect to see kill teams looking fairly distinguishable from your regular 40k troops, right? You would have specific items to be carried or represented on the models that would make them unique to kill team and the specialist units available in the game. Well, no. So, here's where we come to my first gripe with Games Workshop's Kill Team. The Kill Team you get in Krog Skulls Boys is made up of models that are over 10 years old. You get a burner looter sprue that includes a mech and big shooter and a rocket launcher. Yes, they come in this fancy coloured plastic now, which in itself is very useful for allowing you and friends to play straight out of the box, that I'll grant you. But many board games have done this forever. So although it's a positive step, it's not one I'm gonna big up the G-dubs on. But they still have the horrid mold lines down the legs and boots and everywhere else. The color is the only noticeable change. 
These old models would have been far more palatable though had Games Workshop actually bothered to add just a few extra details to the sprues. Hell, there's plenty of room on these bad boys. Something like a range of accessories to make your standard orc into a kill team specialist would be nice. A scope or two, an orky walkie talkie, a few booby traps, anything. Even some new heads to our character, Christ. I'm sure just those few additions would have guaranteed most loyal greenskins would have parted cash for this box. Instead they rely on a few counters and cards to try and pull us in. This seems like a really wasted opportunity and indicates to me that not as much time and attention has gone into Kill Team as you might have hoped. I'm sure Games Workshop have left the way open for third party model companies to provide far better Kill Team squads. And I'm sure they will. This Kill Team release seems really lazy to me. It's a pick and mix of existing stuff they had laying around the office. For example, though lovely, the servo haulers have been around for a while. It took zero effort to throw them into this bundle. But that's not all. They're not even Orc models, they're Imperial. So if you ask me, that's fairly lazy. The eight page booklet with a short story, the cards and the Orc counters are the only really exclusive things in this box. The tactics and missions cards, or the information they contain, can easily be obtained from somewhere else. You know, you could go to friends, forums and such like, and get that information there. So really buying this box on the strength of that material is a, is a poor reason really, in my view. Um, the tactics are more than likely just copy paste from the Orc tactics that have already been written and tested for the new Orc Codex, and I'm quite sure they are. Um, we've already had a few leaked and it does seem like that is the case. So if that's correct, I'm really happy, but it does prove that very little effort went into this box. But it does mean we will have some juicy tactics for our boys when the codex finally drops. So without new or unique upgrades, there's nothing really to entice you in. That is, of course, unless you fancy yourself a set of the Galvanic Servo Haulers. Now, I'm not going to deny these are really cool minis. They have a truly steampunk feel about them. Lots of incredible details. But a new player may be confused and believe these to be Orc machines. And they're not. From an Orc's perspective, the way I see it, they're loot. And there's plenty of useful bits for conversions on the sprues if you choose not to construct them as the manual insists. These tracks, for example, could make great grot tank tracks. And these servo hauler bodies look like they'd make monstrous engines for a battle wagon. There's even a mini toolbox complete with tools inside that would be a great accessory for a big mech. But if you construct this set as the instructions would have you construct them, you'll end up with a bunch of very distinctly imperial looking machines. They're literally covered in giant skull emblems. The point I'm making is that although these models are fabulous and plenty of Orc players may find a use for them, they are not Orc models. Personally I think it's disappointing that an Orc kill team doesn't have Orc scenery in it. Again, I'm sure this is something a third party company like Cromlech who already do some orc scenery pieces like the themed orc barrels and some barricades like those Forge World used to do, might supply if they were to do their own Kill Team variant package, which I'm sure one of them guys eventually will, to fill the void. Let's move on and take a quick look at the instructions. So to start with, we have the instructions to build your orc spanner, then your burner boys and your looters. Then we have something that both pleases and outrages me at the same time. I think it's a great move for Games Workshop to include the rules for the models in the box. It's fantastic. It's a brilliant idea. It makes perfect sense. Keep it up. But hang on a moment. Burner boys? Burner boys. Burner boys? Burner boys. Oh, I see. We have every nationality of burner boys, but no mention of looters or spanners. Here's the models. Sod the rules. Sorry guys, hard luck. Hardly everything you need to play an orc kill team in one easy pick up box, is it? Then follows the servo hauler building instructions. And then there's no painting colour guide printed with this booklet like most others these days either. So forget it. <laughs> you don't have 
half of what you wanted in this manual. Finally, there are the bases included in Grog Skull's Boys. They are included in 32mm bases rather than 25mm bases. Now I know this is a big, a big dividing point in the community. Now there's lots of boys out there with hundreds of boys on 25mm bases, thousands even, and some people clearly do not want to be changing them. Nobody's forcing you to, you don't have to. And in fact, there are benefits to sticking with your 25mm bases. Some scenery, for example, is designed specifically for a 25mm base to stand upon. So by upgrading to a 32, you might actually cause yourself to not be able to enter your own terrain piece that you had specifically for your models previously. Um, beside that, there's also the benefit of when you get into assault with smaller bases, you can get more bases into base contact than you can with a 32. They're smaller, so you can get more of them. It just makes sense. There is, however, an argument for the 32s. The 32s do give more ground coverage, which is in itself helpful, especially in 8th. But they're also the way the wind is blowing. They're included in this box. They're probably going to be included in all the new Orc releases too. So, and... Unless you really, really are wanting to stick with 25s and you're going to keep that consistency going with your new boys, in which case I suggest you buy a pack of, or several packs, or get a good stock of 25mm bases because you're going to need them over time if they're going to stop doing them. Um, there are other companies that do them, of course, so you'll, you'll probably never be left without. But I personally am embracing the way of the wind, so I'm going to go with the 32s. I'm going to buy scenery that... Well, at least in future when I'm looking at scenery, it will be a consideration. I'll have to think, well, can my guy actually stand in this scenery or not? You know, is he going to be too big? But then that said, I do intend to actually raise the size of my bases just slightly, just enough that you can put your finger around them and pick them up by the bases rather than the model, because that is one of my pet peeves, is picking a model up by the actual model. It's just, nah, not for me. I like to put a lot of time into painting and I might not be the best, but I put time into it. I don't want people touching the model. So I make the base thick enough. So I'm going to cast my bases in resin and put little magnets in them so they can stand on uh, magnetic shelves and they can also be carried in a magnetic carry case and stuff like that. But we'll, we'll get into that another time. I'll show you how I do that and uh, maybe you can try it out for yourselves. Overall, I do feel like this whole box was kind of thrown together like an orc truck. But if you've got money to throw around like that, then go for it. Get yourself the box. You get some nice models. The server haulers are nice. We've talked about them not being actually orky, but they're nice. Uh, you get the, the orc looter burner sprue. Nice again. Um, and you get about a fiver's worth of card products. So if you've got money to throw around, sure, go get it. Uh... But if you're looking for this box to actually contain everything you need to have an orc kill team, or you're actually looking for kill team specific models where they might have the specialties represented on the models perhaps or something like that, then you're going to be very disappointed. I sure was. That's why I did this review. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd like you to like it up there somewhere. Subscribe and hit the little bell button and uh, leave a comment down below. In fact, the comments are the most important thing to me. Just let us know what you think. Tell us about your boys. Tell us what you think about Kill Team, about this box, anything. I want to hear from you guys. And especially, I would really like to get some viewers' models because I'd like to start, at the end of these videos, I'd like to start showcasing viewers' models. Orc-related, though. Sorry, but that's there's the green skin need here there's there's a real need for sharing everything green so no sorry we don't want anything other than orc but i hope you did enjoy see you again goodbye <laughs>